everyone it's Bren here and welcome back to my gardening channel this week I'll be doing a summer garden harvest with a few surprises along the way I'm gonna start off over here and harvest some potatoes I'm actually gonna wear these um, because I can't find my garden gloves and I really don't want to be digging in here without anything up covering my hands I have seen a lot of red back spiders in this area I'm going to harvest three varieties today, starting off with this bag here, which is the sapphire. These potatoes are purple in colour and they're meant to be medium size, but mine look quite small so far. I really don't know what to expect in here, but I'm just going to give it a try anyway and dig down and see if there's anything else. Oh, uh, let me see. No, there's one there. I just found my biggest one so far. And um, this is looking really promising because I'm just starting to dig in a bit deeper now and um, this is what came out. Just found a big root system. I'll pull that one out and have a look. Oh, it's quite a few potatoes on here. And the really cool thing about these potatoes, I've never actually grown them before, but they're meant to actually retain their purple colour. So, um, you can have like purple mashed potatoes. Well, I've had a pretty good dig around here and the harvest isn't really that big compared to the size of the bag that I had them growing in. But this doesn't mean I'm not gonna try and grow them again. And um, we have had a really tough summer. It's been quite difficult keeping the water up to the potatoes. Um, I'm gonna give them a try again next year and I might have better luck. Next up, I'm going to dig for these potatoes, which are called Sebago. And these, oh, there's one there. And these are actually um, very common ones that you usually find in supermarkets. A good all round spud. I might just pull out one of the plants and I might just find. Nah, I didn't. I was going to say some potatoes, but there's none there. I'll keep on digging. I'll pull this one out. Okay, you know what, that's not bad anyway. They might have just pulled off the actual uh, root. Let me go and have a dig. Please let there be something in here. After all those times when I'm coming out watering these things. Oh, wow. Oh, hold on, I found one. Let's see. Woohoo, grand total is two so far. So I got about 10 of those potatoes. I would say this one here is probably my largest one. I was gonna harvest some red Norland as well, but I think I'll wait a little bit longer. There's still a bit of green there with the leaves, so you never know. If I give them maybe a bit more water, I might get a bigger crop. So I didn't really get much out of those two bags. It hasn't really been a great year for potatoes. And this happens with gardening. Some years, some crops do amazing and then other years, not so good. I definitely won't let this deter me from trying to grow potatoes again. Last year I grew Kiffler potatoes and I got so much. I didn't actually weigh them, but I got a big basket load of them. So, you know, you just win some and you lose some. I gave one of the sapphires a bit of a rinse so you can have a look at its lovely purple color. This is what it looks like on the inside. There's something gone wrong with these because they're meant to be completely purple. Um, I'm gonna have to do a bit of research into it and maybe, you know, try and improve for next year. I'm gonna head down the back here and harvest some more food. But before I do that, can I just say how generous are other gardeners? I was at school this week and my friend, Anna, we were chatting about loofah plants and she came in in the afternoon and gave me this one. Really lovely of her and I'm really excited about giving this one a go. I've never grown loofahs before. This perennial basil plant has like tripled in size since all the rain. Like so many more of my plants. Um, covered in bees every single day. It's just... A real showstopper I think. I was actually gonna go through here to the archway <laughs> but it's all filling out. I have um, lemon verbena which is in flower 
and over here I have lots of cucumber plants that are starting to cover the pathway and this one here seems to be attaching itself to the basil. So here they are, here's the eggplants. So cute that the flowers are purple to match the fruit. I just picked these two eggplants and I've noticed that something's been eating them. I'll put those two in the basket anyway. I think I'll still be able to salvage part of them. I have this one here on the other plant and it looks really nice. Not really anything being at that, so that will definitely be able to be used. Over this way, I'm actually going to go around the long way because I don't want to walk through all this grass and weedy area. You never know what you'll find, but I want to take a look at what's growing here on this fence. Last year I grew cucumelons for the first time here. I grew from seed and I read that if you left them in the ground they do overwinter and they can survive and sprout back up and it's happened. I have lots of these little cucumelons forming. Here's another one um, and I've noticed quite a few on these plants. I have around four vines growing along here and two elsewhere in the garden and I'm excited to show you what these look like when they're ready to pick. Down here I have a jalapeno plant with lots of chilies on it. I noticed I had one red one on it as well. The dwarf zinnias in this garden bed are looking so bright and cheery. I moved my upcycled trellis over here beside the spider plant. I tried to wrap it around these fan covers. I quite like that colour combination. I have an okra plant here. I noticed there's a few seed pods. Um, I probably should have picked them a bit earlier than this. They have got quite large. Um, but I'll still go ahead and take them off the plant. A couple of weeks ago, I harvested some of these. You might remember they were more of a green color. I told you my friend gave me the seeds from a plant that she had growing in her garden. Um, she thought it could be a cross between a crystal apple and a lemon cucumber. But to me, um, I think they look more like a lemon cucumber now, actually. What do you reckon? There's another one here. Let me see if I can just slip, take it off. Yep, got it. I finally got around to mowing the grass in parts and I still have to do the edging, but it does look a bit better. I love the look of this. So when we first moved in, all this area up here was all grass except for a few of the trees, the orange, the lemon and that one there which is a lily pilly that was much smaller. But I always had in my mind that I wanted to grow plants along the edge here of this wall and have them kind of like draping out over and it's starting to happen now. There's the plumbago and then I have some of the natives, um, a coria and a grevillea just falling over the edge. Okay, so I'm over here at the raised garden beds. Do you remember the pumpkin vine that's growing near the post box? It's starting to make its way over to the clothesline. I wonder if it will try and wrap itself up it. I just picked this white cherry tomato and I spotted another one there. And um, there's a few more on the plant, but they haven't ripened up yet. Hopefully I'll get a fair few tomatoes in this basket today. Got some orange cherry tomatoes. I'll just remove the bag. So with a lot of my tomatoes, I'm getting a lot of blossom end rot. It hasn't been a great year for tomatoes either. You guys know I'm just a home gardener, but from what I've read, blossom end rot happens like in tomatoes when they aren't able to absorb calcium and that can happen from periods of drought or erratic rain. I'll just leave it there for the moment. Lots more tomatoes in here. Let's pick these off. And you see that there on that tomato, you can see a bit of the flesh exposed. I showed you something similar a couple of weeks ago. 
Um, I happened with my melons actually, didn't it? It just splits open like this, too much water at once and and the water pressure gets too much and it just bursts open. I should still be able to eat that one. I'm going to grab the rest of the tomatoes in here. I just grabbed this bag and it's full of little bugs and I just hope it's not fruit flies. I'm going to leave the rest for the moment because I need to keep on going. It's going to be dark soon. I'll leave that one there as well. Here are my capskin beds. I have some of these um, candy stripe capsigans. There's like a completely white one. That's pretty cool looking, isn't it? And then here's some more regular looking ones. I'll pick a few of them off the plant. Plenty of Mad Hatter capskins in here. The plant is completely dripping in them. I love how the tomatoes are all starting to come in now. Um, we've only got one more week of summer, but you know, better late than never. Just pick these pineapple tomatoes off. Um, you would never see these being sold in a supermarket because they're just not quote unquote perfect enough, are they, with all their blemishes on top. But I'm telling you, the flavour from these is going to be amazing. I'm going to place these in very carefully. I've got a few orange currant tomatoes in here. I love these ones. They're really great little snacks. Whenever I see the currant tomatoes, it reminds me of my youngest child because when he was younger, little, and I was out in the garden, he would just go and eat these like crazy when I was pottering around. One of my favourites here, which is called yellow pear. Look what I just spotted in here. See if I can break it off. Look at that. That's the um, banana, yellow banana capsicum. I'm going to head around the front because I spotted a Japanese Fitsu pumpkin this week that I'd like to show you. I'll leave this basket here and I'll collect the two of them later. I'm out the front now and I love this area. It's so full and green. Do you remember a few weeks ago I put some seeds in this section and lots of different flowers? Well, it's starting to fill out now. Granted, it is very weedy, but I can see the plants popping up like the cosmos and zinnias, some beans and corn. I just need to come in here and weed it. Do you remember a few weeks ago I showed you here where I'd sown some more um, zucchinis and cucumbers, melons um, for a bit of succession planting? Well, I have the zucchinis have done well. The plants have got quite large um, while other seeds just didn't really germinate. But that's OK. It was just giving it a go. I am so delighted with this area. Like if a few months ago, if you had said to me that it would look like this now, I would not have believed you. And you know, the other thing I didn't actually mention, um, because we got so much rainwater, the dam that supplies the Sydney Basin is now at 80% and they're talking about um, lifting the water restrictions to level one instead of level two. I am so excited. I don't even know how I'm going to get in here to show you. But down there, that's my Fitsu pumpkin. I've just put it on its side there. So this is an heirloom pumpkin from Japan. Never tried this one before. Look what I just noticed. One of the pumpkins is starting to climb up the paper bark tree. One last place to show you out the front garden before I head around the back. You remember this section of my garden a few weeks ago? Um, with all of the lamb's ears, gazanias, cannas, and it looked half dead. Look at it now. Everything has completely bounced back and even looking at it now, it makes me feel so emotional like that I've got my garden back again. And I love this, what's going on, the way the plants are intermingling in each other. It's just exactly my style. I always give these lamb's ears a good review and this is exactly why no matter how much they die back to the ground they always bounce back and this is just proof of it. So much drought and then we got some rain and they're looking incredible. 
Okay, let's head around the back. Here's the harvest for this week. One more flowering plant to take a look at is this Celosia Golden Plum. Um, I had spoken about it a few times and it's in bloom now. It's very, very pretty. I'm gonna grow more of this next year. I'm happy that I gave it a try. Anyway, I'm gonna head off everyone. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all again next Friday.